Mr. Chairman, uh, this is such a parliamentary inquiry. What is the status of the warrants of arrest issued against these uh, people, those who were issued the uh, warrants of arrest? They still stand. Am I correct, Mr. Chairman? The warrant of arrest was based on a contempt of not showing up. You can now issue another warrant for contempt for being evasive, and obviously the witness is being evasive, and the chair will entertain an motion to cite this gentleman in contempt for lying or evasiveness under the rules. Yes, if I may uh, move or uh, uh, issue the, the motion, Mr. Chairman, it's not only Mr. Ong that's uh, being evasive. I think Mr. Young, likewise, is being evasive because we cannot get a clear answer. They're both yes, uh, each other, and clearly they're being evasive. So I would, you know, I move, I really would move uh, either the, either not to lift the warrant of arrest previously issued by the Senate President or issue a subsequent warrant of arrest for being evasive. Well, against whom? Against whom? Mr. Against Mr. Mr. Young. Both Mr. Young and Mr. Ong. That is a, uh, that is the motion. Well, the chair supports your motion, uh, and uh, the whole world will know that there is a pending warrant of arrest for Mr. Young and Mr. Ong, if the if the if the committee so pleases. Second the motion, Mr. Chair. All right. No objection. The chair here hereby orders that Mr. Lincoln Ong and Mr. Young are placed under arrest. And there are reasons for it, and correct. He presented himself. During the meeting in May 17, you had to pry it out from him. On the other hand, this guy says, uh, and he says that he never had any dealing directly, sabi ni Mr. Yang, sa family. And yet ngayon, sinasabi ni Mr. Long na nagagarad siya si Mr. Long. In fact, if I may add, sir, with your permission, Mr. Laxon, ito sinabi po ng Presidente, ano bang reklamo ninyo? Kasi si Michael Yang daw, Eh, negosyante, negosyante ito. Adre, hindi naman ito sabihin mo na nagtatapol ito ng pera. May contact ito sa China na malalaking korporasyon at siya ang nagpagador. In other words, uh, siya ang gumagaran siya talaga ng, ng bayad o siya ang magbabayad sa, sa made their entry here. So, yun ang sinabi ng Presidente. Which, uh, uh, again, quote and quote siya, which uh, uh, supports the statement made by uh, Mr. Ong na ginagarantiyahan ni Mr. Yang so hindi totoo na wala siya transaksyon ginagarantiyahan niya lahat yung ino-order nila at uh, dahil dyan uh, dapat uh, nakita uh, talagang may relasyon talaga si Mr. Yang sa family at uh, uh, ang masasabi ko lang uh, dapat talangin pa natin si Mr. Ong para masarado na yung uh, kanyang statement na makikita talaga na nagsisinungaling siya. And uh, go ahead, Mr. Luxon, you can go ahead. This is your, uh, this is your time to ask them. Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Ang sunod na tanong ko, dahil sinabi nila, binabayaran nila ng money transfer or cash yung suppliers. So, saan kayo bumibili ng foreign exchange? Kasi hindi naman nyo pwedeng bayaran ng pesos, di ba? So Tama. how do you do it? Where do you buy your foreign exchange? In this case, RMB. How did you secure the foreign currency to pay your suppliers? Uh, proper proper bank transaction po yun, Mr. Chairman. Hindi po siya RMB, Mr. Chairman. US Hindi dollar po, Mr. Chairman. Hindi siya kakakakakakakak RMB. Ang tinatanong sa'yo, siya kakumukuha ng foreign exchange para bayaran yung mga tao doon. Uh, Siyempre, mag-remit ka. Mag-remit ka, di ba? So, Saan kayo kumukuha ng pera pang bayo doon? So, pag dito po sa ka? pag dito po sa Philippine side, uh, we we transact with our bank. Sinong bank? Union, At kailan, Union Bank. Union bank. At kailan? Kailan kayo unang nag-transact? Uh, we we have to check the, the the record pero continuous naman yung transaction. Ah, sinabi ka ni Wang na ang unang transaction niya sa Union Bank ay November. That is a full seven months. Pitong buwan magbula nung nakakuha kayo ng malalaking kontrata na sunod-sunod na linggo sa nung Abril. 
Masa record yan. Binasa yes, ko na kayo na. So, it took you seven months bago kayo magsanda. Ang hiniram nyo doon, 500 million. Sa so, mga katwid, nagbabayad kayo between that time ng pera. Saka lang kayo umutang nung nagkaroon na kayo ng pera. Kuno, kuno ha, kuno. Hindi ako naniniwala dahil ang tingin ko, nagbabayad kayo. Pero hindi nyo masabi kung saan nyo kinukuha yung pera. Galing ba yan sa ibang sources na illicit? Uh, hindi po, Mr. Chair. Uh, meron po kami mga sariling pondo rin. At... Uh, oh. Bigla may sariling pondo na naman. O sige. Opo. So, um, specifically, sa... Senator Gordon, kaginong pera, bank accounts, kung saan nang galing yung nirebit nyo sa mga supplier? Uh, if ever kung, if ever magre-remit kami sa mga supplier, dapat po talaga magagaling sa ano namin, sa bank uh, account namin. Kasi... Kaya nga, so, alig bank, sino ang may-ari nito mga bank accounts at magkano ang nirebit nyo? Uh, corporation po namin. Yung fa family pharmaceutical po. Yung corporation nyo, Mr. Ong, ang pera is 625,000 lang. Pesos. Ikaw naman, o peso, 625,000 pesos lang. Kaya hindi pwede bang gagaling sa corporation ninyo kung milyon-milyon ang binabayad nyo sa Chinese suppliers. Sabi mo, galing sa bangko. Tanong ngayon, sino ba may-ari ng mga account na yun? Uh, corporate account po, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, talaga nagsisinungaling ito eh. <laughs> no, ay. Talaga. No, How can it be uh, a corporate Chairman. account? With the Mr. account? Chairman. Where, yeah, yes, uh, sorry, yeah. sorry, Senator Pink. Senator Laksan, go ahead. Establish very clearly na ang pera ninyo, 625 pesos. Ang tanong ni Senator Dillon, 625,000 pesos. Ang tanong ni Senator Dillon, 625,000 pesos, tapos ang nire-remit ninyo, sabi mo, galing din sa corporation ninyo, sa Parmali, maliwanag yan, hindi sa ibang corporation, hindi kayo ng utang at lahat. Saan ang galing yung perang nire-remit sa China? sabi na natin galing sa bangko rito. Ang sigurad mo, galing sa corporation nyo. E ang late nga ng, uh, ng capital ng corporation ninyo, 625. That's the question. How do you reconcile that? Okay, uh... Uh, Mr. Chairman, can I, pwede na po ba ako mag, ano, mag, uh, magpaliwanag? Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, thank, thank you, Mr. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, marami pong kasing series of transaction yun. So, meron naman po kami na iipon na, na pera. So, so, that's our pondo. And then, at the same time, sa mga, sa mga series of transactions, pagka, pagka malajo malaki na po yung project, kinakailangan din po namin mangutang sa mga kaibigan. So, hindi ko po dinideny na may, meron kaming mga utang sa labas. Hindi <laughs> naman yan ang problema eh. Bilyon-bilyon ang tinatransact nyo. Marami kayong kaibigan. Kaya lang paliwanag kung saan rin kinuha ng mga kaibigan nyo yung pera niyan. Huwag paliwanag kayo sa Money Laundering Council. Hmm, uh, definitely, we... we sige, sige. Po, sige, po. sige, sagutin mo. Ay, definitely po. Uh, kinakailangan po namin makipag-corporate sa um, anti-money laundering. Senator Dick, the first transaction of Fermali is 54 million. Mm. The money that they had was 625,000. All right. So, where did the 53 million come from? He said, from bank accounts. Whose bank account? Because corporate. it cannot come... Uh, uh, ano? Ano? Corporate. Ano? Corporate. Corporate. corporate account. Sagot niya. Corporate. How? Corporate yung corporation ng pera? 625,000? Mr. Chairman, on, on the screen, ito yung timelines, ano? Oh. Ewan ko kung sasisingit dito yung nakasingit sila. <laughs> Para gamitin lang pero look, and I'd like to address these questions also to Mr. Lau. Ano? January 2, you were appointed and sabi mo nag-apply ka. Where is your letter of application? Do you have a copy to be appointed under secretary uh, OIC PSDBM at the same time executive director? Um, 
uh, it should be distinguished between the two. My statement is I applied as undersecretary, which I was appoint appointed to as undersecretary in DPM. With respect to executive director, I never applied for it. It, it was already stated, uh, I think, last year and this year, Senate investigation, that there was a vacuum when the executive director was removed from office by reason of lack of um, uh, qualification. Okay. Is alam na natin yon, Attorney Lau, alam na natin yon. Huwag na ulitin. Okay. After, he was, after he was, she was removed from office, there was a vacuum. I was instructed to be OIC only. So the secretary of DBM was the one who executed the OIC. You know. Okay. So never, alam na natin yan. Never mind. Yes, sir. February 4, you wrote the Civil Service Commission requesting that uh, they classify yung mga employees, yung mga staff sa PSDBM as confidential employees. Why did you do that? When I took into office on January 2020, I noticed that a lot of positions have been vacant by reason of high turnover rate. Ang high turnover rate, mabilis po yung alisan dyan kasi nga walang security of tenure. Second po, uh, when I, I took uh, that position, na notice ko rin po na uh, very few are uh, interested in, in applying. So, uh, ang third din po, when I checked it, there was a structured proposal by um, a consultant of uh, the previous executive director, Ms. Idine Cueva, that uh, they have this proposed structure. Kasi nga, medyo problematic yung structure ng PSDBM. In fact, previous to me, uh, PSDBM was being moved to be either demolished or... Uh, uh, I think when can tanggalin na sila sa operations or they will be incorporated as a GOCC. So based on that, as part of my of my professional work, I consulted the uh, civil service commission as to the feasibility whether or not these positions which are crucial can be or may not be considered as confidential positions. It's a consultation. However, there was no response for an entire year. Lacking the response, we continued operating the PSDBM in a usual manner based on the existing structure. Po. Mr. Attorney Lau, dahil walang security of tenure, konti nag ang solusyon mo, gawing confidential employees. Hindi mo ba alam ng confidential employees? Wala rin security of tenure? No, sir. That's, that's, that's part of it. Kasi ka... Uh, the, the purpose we wrote that letter, kasi nga mayroon mga concerns again, it's a point of inquiry. In the, we inquired if it can be. Kasi nga part of the, of the, the dilemma of the PSDBM status yun. Kasi if you look at it until now, that's a problem eh. Mabibis ito, 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 letter mo eh, nakapla sa board, Attorney Lau. Yes, yes sir. In spite of the agency status, it is also uh, vital for the agency head to... Uh, appoint what? officials and personnel with utmost trust and confidence that are capable of handling highly confidential dele delegations on top of the regular functions. Yes, I mean, highly confidential procurement yung pig-uusapan natin. It should be transparent. Yes, um, being whether or not they are con confidential or not, Mr. Chairman, it will be transparent because everything is public record and everything is on record, even all the senator's office have confidential employees, but these are all transparent, kahit saan po tayo ganun. So, these director positions and EA positions, um, as for a formal ED, it's a nature of employment that they can be hired or fired at any time by reason of confidence. Uh, whether slow ang performance, you can be fired. Kasi, di ba, it's, it's an ongoing, recurring issue kasi before. Is the sales, the slow-moving items na hindi mabenta, yung operations namin, di ba? It's, it's part of the system. And regardless kasi, it's, it's, being, it's being painted na there is an ill motive. Let me point it to the public. I was designated as OIC. Regardless whether this letter will be approved or denied, it will not make a difference on my part because I am not the appointing authority. The executive director has the authority to appoint hire or fire employees in PSDBM. However, I am an OIC based on the designation by the Secretary of Budget and Management. My only authority is to manage the office. I have no authority 
to hire or to fire. Now, that letter will not benefit me in any manner if it is approved or denied because I cannot hire or fire. But I wrote that letter as part of my function as OIC in any event that there is a new executive director, they will benefit from it. It's a legal question. Diba? I, the only function, diba? the question is, pinagawa mo yan kasi gusto mo. No, I don't have the authority because I'm just an OIC. It is clear in the designation on my person that my only responsibility is to run the day-to-day -day operations of the office. The authority to appoint was not part of the ones dedicated to me. So whether or not that civil service, civil service letter would be acted upon positively or negatively, it will not affect my, my OIC designation. Second, it's a pure letter. Diba? So what difference does it make? It doesn't make any difference kasi a year after pa ang response ng civil service. On the third point, to say, ah, oh, kasi may pre predetermination yan, may plan plan there. I'll just answer it straight. February 4th, there is no COVID. Chairman, Mr. Chairman. I make a plan, magkaka-COVID tayo. Mr. Chairman, Attorney Lau, Go ahead, sir. Yeah. Attorney Lau said that one year pa nag-respond yung uh, Civil Service Commission, is that correct? Did I hear him correctly, Mr. Chairman? Yes, I believe so, Mr. Chairman. One yeah. year ba? No, March, March 9, the CSC denied your request. Andiyan, no? Nasa timeline. And I have here the copy of the uh, resolution signed by Chairperson uh, De La Rosa Bala, uh, Commissioner Lizada, and Acting Director for Del Moro. Hindi one year. Yes. I, I, I it's, more than a year. it's more than a year. It's more than a year because I wrote the letter on February 2020. So that's March, March 9, 2021? Yes, March 9, 2021. It's more than a year ang response sila. So I while they didn't make any response, yeah. we said upon uh, our function in the office remained the same as before I entered into office. So we just continued the, the operations, Mr. Chairman. Okay, moving forward, let's go back to the transaction. Anyway, March 20, mayroong FDA circular. Ang requirement, the among importers and PPEs, LTO, license to operate, and proof of application for notification, yun ang sufficient compliance for customs release. And then, on April 6, FDA Circular 2020-547, ang kailangan na lamang LTO sufficient na compliance for custom release. And true enough, April 15, eto na yung uh, naward na kayo ng 54 million pesos for the supply of 2.4 million surgical masks at 22 pesos and 50 uh, centavos each. I'm referring to Palmari, you know, of course. And then March 16 or April 16, Dito yung nakasingit pa yung 2782. No? Uh, ang presyo nyo kasi 2250, 2782, and 22 pesos per piece. And then, you know, fast forward, May 28, kasi marami na kayo, 3.8 billion na yung uh, contract nyo ng uh, 1,910 uh, sets ano, of PPEs. Tapos purchase order May 8. May 26, naglabas uli yung FDA uh, circular 2020-018, ano? importers of PPE, LTO shall be sufficient compliance for the custom release. Importers are advised to apply CPN, Certificate of Product Notification, prior to commercial sale and distribution of medical services. And then November 9, LTO and CPN, pati yung CMDN for custom release. No? The, the, the reason why I'm pointing this out, Mr. Chairman, parang there's a grand scheme to really allow Palmari uh, enough leeway to import all these uh, medical supplies. That's, that's the uh, point I'm trying to raise, Mr. Chairman. And uh, again, uh, unless Mr. Lincoln Ong, Michael Young, and the rest of Palmari Pharmaceuticals, the incorporators, will tell us the truth in this... Uh, in this, in this hearing, then we can just uh, speculate 
on what really happened you know, uh, or the circumstances behind circumstances behind all these transactions so i i think i have exceeded my my time the time allotted to me mr chairman uh, otherwise i will have to proceed to another uh, matter mr chair Yes, well, if you have more questions, the chairman has the leeway to allow you to continue the questions because you're on point. But I see Senator Dion having a question. Go ahead, Senator Dion. Yes. Senator Dion, you're on mute. Yes. Just to go back to Mr. Lincoln Ong, here is a resource person who is clearly lying on the record because he says the funds were corporate funds, corporate funds of Fairbally. But the financial statement, the audited financial statement, indicates that beginning of 2020, they had only 625,000, which is the paid up capital. Clearly, the corporation had no capacity to pay the initial order of 54 million. So it is not true at all. And there is a deliberate effort to mislead the committee by saying these are corporate funds. We asked him who are the, uh, who advanced this payment? He said it was from uh, bank accounts of Union Bank or something. Who owns the bank accounts? He is already evasive. This witness, Mr. Chairman, is clearly lying, is clearly lying. And uh, in the uh, uh, case of Arnold, which is a 1950 case, this Senate has the power to detain, as we have detained people until they tell us the truth. This witness is both evasive and refuses to answer or telling a lie. Uh, uh, and therefore, he has been declared in contempt earlier we move that the contempt uh, uh, order be now executed and we send our sheriffs, our, our, our security people to arrest Mr. Ong right now. 